Hello guys and welcome back. Now, when it comes to shoes and boots, one of the major things you gotta think of is the sole material. And I know that a lot of times when you look at advertising for shoes, they really show the upper. That's their big focus is we use a Goodyear welt and uh, you know the upper is made out of beautiful calf skin or whatever it is. And uh, they don't really, they don't go into too much detail usually about the sole. Now, there's kind of a reason for that. It's not very sexy. It's not the part that people see. However, it might be one of the the most important parts of the shoe. For example, you're really not going to want to get a flat soled shoe if you need traction. And if you remember a few months back, I did a video about this where I didn't want to use my Red Wing Iron Rangers because they had a flat sole. I needed something with a little bit more traction. So I ended up going into a few different options in that video. But one of the things to consider is the sole. So I'm going to give you kind of a rundown of the ones that I have an example of. Of course, this is not everyone that's available. There are many other soles out there, probably countless variations on the same type of thing, but we can easily break them down into one of two categories. These categories are leather soles and rubber soles. Now within each, you have many, many variations, as I mentioned. Now let's start with one of the ones that you're probably most familiar with, and that is the classic leather sole. This right here, this is an Alden shoe, and as you can tell, the sole is painted black. That's sort of to help the formality on a shoe like this to keep it sleek and subdued and that's just a very very nice look. If you haven't tried an Alden shoe you're really missing out because this is a great old American company just wonderful old world craftsmanship right up there with a lot of the more high-end guys. Uh, I'm a big fan of Alden for sure. Now when it comes to leather soles there's usually single and double stacked with double of course you add you get a little bit more durability but with the single, you get a sleeker look. So if what you're after is a really low profile shoe, maybe like an Italian type of look, you wanna go with a single. And you know, there's not a lot of companies that offer a double leather sole. I know that Allen Edmonds does offer them on some of their models. You get a little bit more longevity and a little bit more durability out of those. Now, another type of leather sole is the Butyl, which is kind of oil infused. This is mostly for water repellency, a little bit more weatherproof, and you're really not gonna get what you'd get out of a rubber sole with leather, but it does help you kind of just keep the elements at bay for a little while longer. Now, another step toward traction and durability is the hybrid leather rubber sole. And there's a lot of variations on this. This one right here, as a matter of fact, I, I ended up doing myself. Uh, I, well, I sent it out to have it done. I didn't just sit down in a workshop and do it, but they put these in here. I believe these are called soul savers. And the idea is that they give you a very thin strip of rubber here just to help you not like carpet surf in the beginning. And again, just to sort of prolong the life of your shoe, give you a little bit of traction. There's really not a lot there. This almost feels like a grocery store conveyor belt, but it is nice and it keeps it, as you can see, very, very low profile. So that's another option. Another great example of this is right here. This is a George Brown Chelsea boot and this has basically a factory installed version of the sole savers that I did on those but uh, this is a great example of a double stacked leather sole. You can see that this is a little bit thicker, a little bit chunkier but it does have a double stacked leather sole so that's a good example of what I'm talking about. My final and most aggressive version of this is uh, this pair of Woolrich boots that I have right here. You can see that they've taken a commando style rubber sole and stitched it to the leather sole. Now I think this is a really great great combination of the two because it's still sleek it's not super duper chunky but uh it does have that added you know kind of work boot look to it that utility that traction so you can throw these on and basically handle almost anything yet it still has that really nice look of the leather stacked sole so i really like these quite a bit that would conclude all of the different variations that i own of leather soles now the other type of sole which I'm sure you've been wearing since you were even able to wear shoes is the rubber sole. Now this comes in a lot of different variations. I have a bunch here in front of me so I want to show them to you. But the first one I'd like to show you is one that is almost, it's trying to imitate a leather sole like we saw before. This is a completely rubber sole. As you can tell, it's super duper flexible. That's one of the great things about rubber is that they're very flexible, very grippy, and um, they just don't have that, that satisfying click and sort of the integrity of a leather sole but it's a less expensive option this one even has fake stitching on it you can see right here this is the Stafford boot uh, JC Penny it's the JC Penny brand Stafford I think this is the gunner model these used to be a great option for the under $50 on sale segment 
but really, as recently, they've made a change in their leather. I'm not really sure what it is, but something's changed. This is also the pair of boots that I used the technique I did in a previous video of making cheap boots look expensive. But uh, this is a great example of what you're gonna find in a dress shoe or boot with a rubber sole. They can still be sleek. They have the added benefit of being super duper flexible, but you just don't have that integrity that you have with a leather sole. Another variation on the more dressy rubber soles is the Danite sole. As a matter of fact, this isn't even a Danite sole. This is sort of a replica of it. This is my pair of Thursday boots, Duke Chelsea's. They've been great. And this is an excellent example. One of the, the purposes behind this design is not to pick up dirt and mud and track it wherever you are, because this is relatively flat. It doesn't really hold on to snow, dirt, mud, whatever you just walked through, I don't know but uh, that's one of the added benefits of the Danite sole. Again, this is not a true Danite sole, but they basically look the same. Now, the idea of not picking up mud and dirt and debris actually originated with work boots where farmers didn't want to track around mud. And uh, one of the earliest versions of that kind of sole is the Christie Wedge, which you can see right here on this pair of Red Wings. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that they were the ones to really pioneer that type of sole. As you can see, it's not very deep. The lugs on this are not very deep. However, it is very grippy. This has a lot of traction. These are my go-to work boots. I love these. They just, they get better with age as most good shoes will but um, the Christie wedge is a timeless look very old school especially with the mock construction like this one right here this thing looks like a throwback to the 1800s but um, it's just as handsome today as it was back then and it works just as well and of course we can't mention a good rubber sole without talking about the LL Bean bean boot like this one right here this has their very very unique chain pattern on the bottom here I, I don't know if that's what they call it but it does it almost looks like chain links on the bottom going across this is a very gummy very very grippy sole if you've ever worn these before you know the superior traction that you get with a pair of these boots the great thing about these two is that the sole basically wraps right around here and uh these originally i, I believe were invented by fusing the upper part of a full leather boot to the bottom part of a rain boot. And that's, I believe, how L.L. Bean ended up coming up with this idea. They're iconic. They, they've basically gone unchanged since they made them. They're all still handmade in Maine, USA. These right here, if you live in New England, they, these, they're like an obligatory piece of footwear. You have to have a pair of L.L. Bean boots if you live up here. They're just great for the slushy, nasty weather that we usually have in March or, you know, the transitional type of months. Now, another one that I have, but I can't seem to find them anywhere, is on on my Allen Edmonds long branch and that's the commando sole so if you were to close your eyes and think of a work boot sole most likely what would pop into your brain is the commando sole which looks like this right here this is the, the same pair of Woolrich boots that I showed you before basically it looks like this however instead of being a hybrid leather rubber sole it is a full rubber sole and this actually has a pretty cool backstory now the founder of Vibram actually invented this sole after six of his friends were killed while climbing a mountain in 1935 and he believed that their lives could have been spared if they had worn the proper footwear. So he developed the commando sole. Now this has seen action in you know, the military and of course work and construction and automotive. I mean, any kind of job where you need a tough, rugged pair of boots that really has a lot of traction, you've seen this sole, I'm sure. And they even have it on some shoes, on some dress shoes. Although I really wouldn't call them dress shoes. If you're shoe has a, a commando sole, it's leaning much more towards the, the casual side than the more formal side, which is fine, and you can rock that look. I just always thought it sort of looked like a shoe trying to be a boot, and why not just go with a boot? Now the Red Wing Iron Ranger, which I mentioned before, uses a cork nitrile blend sole. And that's basically when they take little pieces of cork and it's blended with rubber. Now, this does have a lot of traction. However, most of the time when you see this type of sole, it doesn't have any studs in the bottom. It's totally flat. And the idea is that the surface area of that rubber actually has enough traction to get you around. I always thought it was kind of silly to have a nice work boot upper with a bottom, a, a sole that really doesn't have a lot of traction. I want some lugs. I want to be able to do work things in a work boot. Otherwise, it's really just kind of playing dress up. So that's why I'm a big fan of the second generation that Red Wing came out with, the Iron Ranger that has a lugged sole on it. That's a much better version, but that's another option. You can get a cork nitrile sole as well. 
Now, a sole that I don't own is the crepe sole. Now, originally these were made out of coagulated latex. However, recently they're they're made out of a synthetic blend uh, that basically mimics the properties of the coagulated latex. They're very heavy, but they have a lot of traction and they have a kind of, kind of like a springy feel to them. They're, they're very soft, so they're very, very comfortable. Very quiet, almost like sneakers if you're walking on a hard surface. It's a great option. I know that you can get these on uh, some chukka boots. They look really, really cool. I'd like to add some to my collection. And finally, one that you probably won't see much outside of the reproduction kind of segment is the raw cord sole. Now these were originally made for the military by melting down old tires and you can still see the cords in there. So uh, it's a really interesting look. Not a lot of companies make them unless they're making repro military style footwear, but it was a very tough, very durable and very readily available material during wartime. They were able to take used tires and make them into uh, something that our soldiers could wear. Very, very cool with an interesting history. So if you're somebody who's looking for something a little bit different, you can find examples of these. So guys, I believe that covers most of the types of soles that you will find out there. Remember that the bottom of your shoe is just as important as the top of your shoe, and especially when it comes to slipping, tripping, uh, falling down, you don't want to get hurt out there, and you know, choosing the right footwear is totally key in that. Now, I didn't cover things like sneakers, like hiking boots, like specialty boots, but when we're talking about style, most of the time, what you're gonna find is a variation on one of the ones that I showed you here. However, I'm sure that I forgot one or two. So please let me know in the comments if there's anything that I forgot. And also let me know which one of these is your favorite. Of all the ones that I've shown you today, which one do you see yourself reaching for on a day-to-day -day basis? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.